I uh, just want to run you through a couple of things with Google image searches. You'll be pre preparing your presentations this week on uh, your exhibition topic and you'll want to have some nice clear images to use in your presentations. So when you search for something uh, and you find good images on websites, so let's say for example that in National Geographic you're reading a website and there was a really good picture on there, first thing you need to be aware of is that you can't just take images from any old place. The reason for that as you can see on this website, it's because the photographers for many of these websites that you're looking at are paid for their images. Okay, So if you just go in and you steal the image, and that's what you're doing really, if you just take it, let's say you just screenshot it like this and go, yep, cool, love that image, going to take those dolphins for my presentation. It's kind of like just walking into a shop and saying, I really like that thing, I'm going to take that home with me and I'm not going to pay anybody for it. So sometimes photographers will allow their images to be used, uh, and license them for reuse, but sometimes they will not. So you need to be aware that that is a thing and you can't just take images from anywhere. The second thing is that you want good quality images. So the example I'm going to use today is if we were looking for images around poverty and you were investigating poverty, you're going to go into Google Image Search and look at all the images results that come up. There's loads and loads and loads. You can categorize them up the top. For example, if you want just images on the Philippines, you could click on that tab. If you wanted things related to hunger, you could click on that one. Maybe you want uh, things to do with water or photography, you know, whatever you want. There's lots of categories first, and I would start there. The second thing I would want you to be trying is this. Go into the tools, okay, and thinking about, firstly, the size of the image. So there's large, medium, and icon, how they're categorized. Okay, if you click on an image down here, it will show you the number of pixels in the corner. Okay, so a thousand and above is pretty good. But you'll also find that there are some really big images, some really high quality ones. That one's 3,000. But you'll also find there's some really small ones that are actually what we call icons. So I'll start with those and show you what an icon looks like. Okay, so this one here is attached to a website that's actually a music software website, and it's just an icon. Okay, so if I save that one, I right click it. I've already done this, so I'm not going to save it, but you can go save image as and save the image into your downloads. Okay, I'm not going to do that now because I've already done that, but I'll show you what it looks like in a minute. It's a really small image. The second thing you can do is make them just show all the medium images. Okay, and I have also selected a medium image as my example for this one, and I'll show you that one in a minute of what a medium size image looks like. Okay. And then the third thing you can do is find, and this is I think the best one should always look for, is a large image, especially if you're looking for an image that takes up the whole slide. Okay, so the image that I am going to show you in a moment is this one here, and it's 2048 uh, pixels by 1365. So why is it important to think of the, the size of the image? Because this is what happens when you put them into your presentations. All right, so I've actually downloaded these already. All right, so this is my big image. So I'll start with that one and drop that one onto my slides. As you can see, pretty good quality. So when you stretch an image out, I always like to do this, stretch it from the corner. So I'm going to fill up my whole screen, center it. There we go. Now I'm going to show you my medium image, which was this one. And let's have a look what that one looks like. Whoa, much smaller. Okay, so again, I'm going to put it in the corner and I'm going to stretch it from the corners so it doesn't distort the length or the width. Okay, that's pretty good. Make it a little bit bigger. All right, so that's in the middle. Now it's taking up my whole screen. Let's have a look at my icon image, and this is where you'll be quite sort of uh, surprised, I think, at, at why it's important to get a high quality image. So if we put this one in the corner, even though it's a square, I'm going to stretch it right out so it fills up a lot of the space. All right. I won't stretch it sideways because, as I said before, that kind of distorts the image a little bit, but just for the purpose of this, let's do that, make it a little bit bigger. All right, let's compare these three images now and show you why it's important. Okay, this is my, let's start with the small one. This is my small image. I'm sure you can see all the squares and the blurriness, which we call pixelating. When an image is pixelated, it's too, it's been stretched out too much, basically. It's a very small image. This is my medium image, so it's a little bit better, but it's still quite big. Uh, but quite pixelated and a bit blurry. You can make out the people, you can make out the objects, but it's still not great quality. And this is my large image. Perfect, because even if I was to zoom in further on this one, it's very, very clear and it's very high quality. Okay, so always try and find the large images because they're gonna look way more professional. 
The only exception would be if you're using like a, a different size image on the slide. So if you don't want to take up the whole page, you could do this and maybe use a smaller image, especially if you're making them even smaller, like something like that. And then it doesn't look so bad. But the minute you start stretching them out, they become pretty blurry. So don't find small or medium images. Really quickly, the last thing you want to also do in order to be doing the right thing and making good choices is to look at these two tabs here. I always just go with this one, which images are labeled for reuse. So these are the ones that I was talking about where the author is allowing you to reuse them. Okay, so if I use this one here, it's a very large image and it's been labeled for reuse, which means I'm not going to get into any trouble or find or somebody come after me and ask me why I'm using their images without permission. Okay. So please try two of those tools when you're looking for your images for your presentation.